Donna with Ridge Green Acres. What we're looking at is called a star thistle and this is something we're fighting this year. These are popping up everywhere and from my understanding our county and town had a war on them and obviously lost the battle this year. So this is something we need to try to eradicate as soon as possible. So that's not the reason we're here today. In the background, you can hear my generator going. And yes, it does happen once in a while. The generator will kick on. Thankfully, it is a nice sunny day today, but yesterday wasn't. And it was dark and cloudy and raining on and off all day. And I didn't get my August garden tour done as I had planned yesterday. So we're doing it today. So let's go take a look at the jungle of a garden. <laughs> So we're looking at the outside of the garden area, just outside the fence line, and the weeds are going crazy. There is so much to do around here, and sometimes it gets a little discouraging, but I'm here to tell you, don't get discouraged. I'm here to tell you that anyone can have a garden, no matter how big or small, how many weeds you have, it takes a little work, but anyone can do it. Don't get discouraged if things aren't the way you totally hoped. I do want to show you these acatillo that were given to us. These were those sticks that we stuck in the pot over here. And look, they've all rooted and all have leaves on them now. So they're doing great and I'm so excited about that. I can't wait to see them flower next year. We'll separate them and put them in their own space and pots. Here we are in the greenhouse. A few things down here on the ground. I have my comfrey that I started from seed. We still have two of them left and they're about ready to start hardening off and transplant. We have the Starry Night petunias. They seem to love it in here. They didn't like it when I put them outdoors. so. They're living in here now along with lots of other things that are just thriving. Look at this kale. I have three of these and again, putting them outside, we have such a dry climate, but they absolutely love the humidity and everything in here. I still have to do something with the blueberries, the grapevine, blackberries and raspberries in here. It's a little late in the season to take them out, so they'll probably stay in here another season and then Next spring, we'll bring them outside and plant them in the ground. Things have just kind of gotten away from me this year. We have our dragon fruits here, and they definitely need to be taken care of and transplanted. But as you can see, if you went back or if you've seen the first video of when I first planted them, they were only about that high, just the base of them, and they've grown so much already. So they're going to be transplanted. I have lots to do this weekend. Things are looking a mess. And well, it happens, life happens. Um, some of you know that my mom went in for open heart surgery and I've been busy with that. So the garden's been neglected. And I've been a little embarrassed about uh, showing you my garden and what a mess it is, but you know, this is life. And I'm sure I'm not the only one. And I just want, for those of you who have, you know, are having problems and life happens, I just want to let you know that um, it's okay. Don't give up. Keep going. You know, a lot of these plants are forgiving, which is a good thing. And what I'm showing you here, this is one of the pine trees from up the hill behind me and uh, Paul brought a pine cone down for me and we planted the seed and this is growing a little pine tree in fact I still have a couple of these great big pine cones right up here and that's what the seed came from isn't that neat look at I have a little tree growing so he'll need to get transplanted as well. So let's go take a look at the rest of the garden. So while I've been neglecting the garden, oh my gosh, I gotta show you this really quick. Hold on, where did he go? 
It's a little itty bitty frog. Oh my goodness. Oh, I missed him. Where did he go? He was the greenest little frog I've ever seen. Okay, I missed him, sorry about that. But as you can see, the fence line and the electric fence, I turned the electric fence off because while I was gone, the weeds have taken over. Um, they've taken over everywhere. We started uh, working on the other side of the property yesterday. So this will get done this weekend. Paul's uh, had to take the tractor and the equipment over to a friend's house. And uh, they're leveling some land and putting in, I believe, a shop for his friend. So as soon as we get our equipment back, we will start tearing down the rest of the weeds. I still need to, to go around and hand pick all the weeds around the fence line so I can turn this electric fence back on and not worry about the squirrels and things getting back in. So here's the alter ego pepper plant. Just a lot of stuff that's been neglected. Lots of things growing, but a lot has been neglected. And next year, I swear, things will be better. This, uh, this year, there's just so much has gone on and so much happening. Between earthquakes and having to help the nearby res residents in Ridgecrest, which is what my husband was working on, um, and not having the extra hands around here, a lot hasn't got done. We have a tomato jungle, and I've let this one tomato plant just go. But I swear, these are the yellow pear tomatoes. You can see some of them ripening in there. These are delicious. They are absolutely fantastic and probably my most prolific producing plant that I've had. The, we have banana peppers and they are delicious. They um, are the mild banana peppers so they don't have any heat but they've been really good and um, what we've been doing with our peppers this year is taking them and we roast them a little bit, chop them up and then put them in an oil and vinegar salad. I have Carbachi peppers, I think that's how you say it, and they're just now starting to turn color. We have some purple bell down here. We have poblanos and pasillos, and a lot of this has been picked. We had a wonderful harvest. If you take a look right here, this was one of our first harvests. Unfortunately, it's not all of it because like I said, we've been eating quite a bit. A lot of this actually doesn't make it out of the garden. One of the biggest issues I've had this year are pests. And I need to treat the tomatillos. This is the tomatillo forest. And I'll show you here in just a sec. It is covered with these little slimy larvae things that turn into beetles. And it looks like that one hatched. There's some right up here. If you can see these, there's one right there. They're really nasty and slimy and gross and they have been eating this plant to pieces. So we're gonna treat it again with some neem oil. In here we have California Wonder Peppers. We have Shishito Peppers. And I like those grilled up with adami and garlic. Those are actually really good. Um, this is a tomato plant that I had stuck in here. I had thought it was a cherry tomato and no, it actually gets quite big and bushed out and I've trimmed it back hoping that I didn't have to pull it out of here, but I do have a few tomatoes growing again on it. We have hot peppers in here as well. And let's see if I can find, we have habaneros, chocolate habaneros, and um, ghost peppers in here. Another tomatillo plant that's potted, growing on the outside here. This zucchini plant is still kicking, 
as you can see it is starting to get some of that powdery mildew on it but um, I'm still getting zucchinis off of it the the fruit it's bearing has been delicious and I've been enjoying it so uh, and I have three more <clears throat> up in the uh, squash patch we have a I believe this is a patty pan and this is what it's doing so far not much could be that the uh, container it is in is a little small but you know gardening it's a learning experience so don't be afraid to try and learn and grow I'm not a first-time gardener but it's been quite a long time since I've had so I have to say since we've moved up here to the high desert this is the most productive garden that I've had in the last seven years These are the blue and gold, and we'll see how they do. They, um, they're taking a long, long time to ripen, but they're getting there. Still a lot of green on that plant. The, one of my favorites this year has been the Napa Chardonnay, and there's not, not too much on here that's ripe anymore. These. As soon, it seems like as soon as these ripen, they're plucked off and eaten. <laughs> a few of them make it into the house, um, but these are great snacking tomatoes. And this is my tomato jungle. Some fruit I have been dealing with some of the biggest horn, tomato hornworms I've ever seen. Um, they have been attacking my tomatoes. Um, getting one down here starting to ripen. The um, these right here, these are the these are the atomic grapes. And I don't know if I'll plant them again next year. I had one plant survive. Uh, it's still very small. It is starting to produce. Um all of the others, whether they were in pots or in a raised bed or in the ground, they didn't survive. They didn't grow. They stay stunted in growth. And unfortunately, they just didn't do well for us here in the high desert. This here is a Bonnie's Best, and this is what the tomato hornworms are really attacking. Um, I had quite a few tomatoes on there and quite a few of them were chewed off and leaves were attacked. They almost took that plant down completely. We just have tomatoes in here and yeah, it's starting to warm up here. We're going to have a cooling spell come this week back down in the 70s again. So we'll see. When it was cooler, the tomatoes and things didn't seem to want to ripen. Um, we're in the mid-80s today, so it's not too bad. And I'm already starting to think of the fall garden and going to start seeds today for the fall garden. And we're starting those indoors. And this is just that bed with the uh, yellow pear tomato. Almost ripe. There's one. It's almost ripe. It just fell off in my hand. We'll hang on to it. We have a few here that look ready or almost ready to pick. They can finish ripening up on the counter if they make it that far. Those are pretty tasty. We have strawberries that I'm transplanting. They're Strawberries are going to be going into the wheelbarrow. And that's the turquoise one over here. There's still there's still so much out here to do. I still have two raised beds to finish that never got done. Um, these are things that hopefully we can catch up on this weekend or next if Paul's here. Oh, looks like something got into this tomato. So we are fighting pest. 
and fighting the squirrels, which I think we got the squirrels under control, which means I really need to get out here and get these weeds off this fence line this afternoon or this evening. This is one of the grapevines and it's just trailing up the fence. This is the first year it was planted. Um, it started from bare root. So it's, it's looking pretty good. Seems to be happy and thriving. This is a jelly melon. It hasn't done a whole lot for us this year, but we'll see. A lot of things have started late. Uh, yesterday I got a few things in this purple raised uh, it's not a smart pot I got this one on Amazon but it, it's like a smart pot it's this is a hundred gallon we I stuck some okra in it so, and I think some cucumbers I think that's what those were I didn't have them marked they've just this was the last of what I had started so kind of a mystery bed here the goji berries are doing okay, and Logan's so happy with his sunflower. It's coming to the end. As you can see, it's starting to droop, but um, it was so pretty. He's done really well taking care of it. Down here, we have some goji berries, and you can see the berries on them. We have a here. Let me get out of the sun here. This is a purple holy basil, or Tulsi basil. More of the red goji berry here. This lavender plant, this is, I believe, an English lavender here. And it, uh, it's grown a little bit, but not too much. Maybe the soil here, our soil is pretty pretty dense. I would try to amend some of it. I put mint along the back of the fence line here and I know that's going to take off eventually and it's it's there to help keep pest away. We have raspberry bushes along here. Just a potted cucumber there that hasn't done a whole lot. It's just now I moved it a couple days ago and I think it wasn't getting enough sun so I moved it over here. It was up against the side of the greenhouse. I have so many plans for this garden, but come, come and look. We have beans growing up against the fence again. Forgive me. <laughs> the garden is a mess and I'm almost embarrassed to show you because of all the weeds growing, but I want to share. I enjoy sharing and showing you that, you know, it's not impossible to garden if I can do it. Anyone can do it, especially with our soil and living up in the desert with how dry things are. Did I mention the greenhouse is full of frogs? I don't know if I did. I, that one I wanted to show you, he was so cute. I like frogs. <laughs> I think they're adorable. We have what I think are tree frogs, because they climb up the walls and everything in there. Zucchini plants here, and there are zucchini on it. These here are spaghetti squash. There's two plants here. These are our rattlesnake pole beans here. Another tomato plant that's not too happy, but it's producing tomatoes. More zucchini. <laughs> and did you know, I don't know if it's true or not, but I got a post today from our local gardening group that today is National Hide a Zucchini in your neighbor's yard. <laughs> day or something like that where you're supposed to bring zucchini and share them with your neighbors. There was a funny post that if we uh, have a lot of zucchini to, to take them to our neighbors and 
hide them on the porch. Something about that. I'll, I'll have to double check on that one. But here we have pumpkins and they are all kind of interspersed. We have a Big Max here on the end. We have a green Fardsdale in the center here. And then the, this one over here, these leaves. And it's doing okay. That is the Seminole pumpkin and it's growing along the back and the side here. This is another Seminole pumpkin. It got planted in the ground a little bit later. The bees love the flowers on these. In fact, here's a little guy right here. I don't know if you can hear the hum and buzz, but in the last seven years, we have noticed a decline in our pollinators. Our local town here has a beekeeping association and we are bringing in more and more beekeepers. And this is the most I've seen of the pollinators. In all the years I've been up here, I hardly ever see any of them anywhere, even in some of the bigger gardens. Um, there's a little ladybug. We like the beneficial bugs in our garden. In fact, what you're looking at now are the boys' watermelons. These are those moon and star watermelons the boys planted. And they are doing very well. In fact, there are watermelons starting all over them. And here is this plant right here. It's kind of getting taken over was Ethan's mystery pumpkin plant that he pulled out of the mulch pit. And look, he's got it. A pumpkin starting. We'll see what it turns into and how it does. We have watermelons and I did notice there's a couple larger watermelons. Look at this one. This right here. It is a moon and star watermelon and it's starting. And in here I've noticed that my little friendly praying mantis that we released in the yard. There's one, if I can find him, he is here every day and he lives in this patch and he helps eat the bugs that uh, will try to destroy my watermelon or the boy's watermelon. Got watermelon all over them. This is over here in the corner, one of my elderberry bushes. It's not it's doing okay, but it's its first year. It lost all of its leaves when we first transplanted it. And um, thankfully, it looks like it's going to come back. The rest of the items, I still have an elderberry to plant in the ground. This is more a more recent started. This is a black crim tomato. It needs to somewhere it hasn't started flowering this well oh look it does it has some buds on it and this one I started in May so for us we can even start tomatoes now we have um, our last frost isn't until mid-november so in fact it, it's still a little bit early to plant things for fall garden but I'm going to start the seeds indoors and wait until things cool off. Our temperatures are mild this year, way milder than they've ever been before because we're usually up in the hundreds in August and I don't even think it's reached a hundred this year. Been in the nineties, in the high nineties, but I don't think it's peaked over 100, maybe, maybe one or two days this year. When the last few years, it uh, was up to 106, 103, and uh, my gardens didn't like it. Although this is in the last, well, since we've moved to this property, this is the largest garden I've had here in the high desert. And since we've moved to this property three years ago, um, 
This is definitely the largest garden. Looks like I have some more zucchini growing on here. Just starting. So, thanks for watching the garden tour. We have lots to do. And again, I'm here to remind you, even if you're feeling overwhelmed, just do a little bit at a time. I know it can be hot for a lot of you. I know it can be miserable going out there in the garden wall. Be out there early in the morning or in the evening as the sun's going down. The, for me, those are the best times to um, get anything done here as well. In fact, the sun is coming up and it's probably just now about 7 a.m. So I thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for sticking with me and hopefully the next tour, things will look a lot better and we'll have these weeds under control. Bye-bye and catch you in the next video.